Hello, everybody. My name is Jill, and I'm the children's librarian at the West End Branch Library, and I'm so glad that you've joined me for story time tonight. We are going to read some great books, and we're going to do some poems and some songs, and I'd like us to start off with our very first song. If you guys know how to snap your fingers like this, that's good. If you can't snap your fingers just yet, it's okay to clap your hands instead. And I want you to do that twice every time I say the word book, okay? So let's take a look, take a look at my book. Take a look, take a look at my book. We'll turn the pages slow and look at pictures as we go. Take a look, take a look at my book. Great job, everybody. Thank you. All right. My very first book is called Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I know exactly what you are. I don't know if anybody watched the story time on Monday with Dean Regas from the observatory, but he talked a lot about stars. So I really like this book. We're going to learn some more about stars. This book was written by Julie Craigenau, PhD, with pictures by Carmen Saldana. Let's take a look inside. Oh, that's so beautiful. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I know exactly what you are. Opaque ball of hot, dense gas. Million times our planet's mass. Looking small because you're far. I know exactly what you are. I'm going to take a little pause here for a library commercial for all you grown-ups that might be watching. It's really important when we're reading books to children that we don't skip over those big words, words that we're afraid that they might not know. It, we need to take the time to explain them instead. So let's look at this word opaque. Do any of you kids out there know what the word opaque means? That's a pretty complicated word, right? Opaque just means something that you can't see through. So opaque, when we say that, means not see-through, not transparent. All right, let's go to the next page. Constellations are at best. Just a cosmic Rorschach test. Random patterns spread 3D. Viewpoint dictates what we see. You know what? We've got another big word on this page. Rorschach test. What could that be? That's actually something they used to do where they would put just a, a blotch of ink down and they would ask you what you thought you saw and then you would talk about that. So that's kind of what constellations are. We're just making pictures out of the stars that we see in the sky. Atmospheric turbulence causes rays of light to bend. Blurry light gives views subpar, causing twinkling little star. Gosh, there are a lot of big words in this book. Atmospheric. Do you guys know what the atmosphere is? That's all the air that surrounds us all the way up to the sky. So when that gets in the way and when that blocks the light, that's what makes stars look like they're twinkling. Fusing atoms in your core hydrogen, helium, carbon, and more. With such power, you shine far. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That is what a star would look like if we could cut it out and look right into the middle of it, into its core. Wow. Smallest ones burn cool and slow. Still too hot to visit, though. 
red stars dominate by far. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Now, when it says red stars dominate, that means there are more red stars than there are any other kind of star in the sky. Largest ones are hot and blue, supernova when they're through, then black hole or neutron star. I know exactly what you are. Check it out. That's a big blue star and then a supernova. Wow. And on the next page, a black hole. Gravity holds on too tight. Nothing gets out, mass or light. Black holes are the most bizarre remnants of a twinkling star. Neutron stars spin really fast. When your beams of light sweep past, then we call you a pulsar. I know exactly what you are. Our sun's average as stars go formed five billion years ago. Halfway through its life so far, twinkle mid-sized yellow star. Two stars make a binary or a triple if there's three. Some are solo, just like ours. Twinkle, twinkle, little stars. Quarter trillion stars all stay bound within the Milky Way. Dusty spiral with a bar. Twinkle, galaxy of stars. Stars have planets orbiting, rocky or gaseous, moons and rings. Earth's unique with life so far. Thank you to our precious star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I know exactly what you are. Now, one of the reasons I really like this book is because in the back, it has some great cheat sheets for grown-ups who maybe don't know all of the answers to the questions their kids might ask about space. So there's lots and lots of material about each of the pictures that are in this book. So, all right, that was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I know exactly what you are. Would you guys like to learn some sign language with me? Now, I'm not a sign language educator, so I can't guarantee that everything that I do is exactly right, but I like to learn some signs as I go along. So, we're gonna learn the signs that go along with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So, this one is really great. The sign for twinkle goes like this, like your hands are twinkling in the air. So it would go twinkle, twinkle. The sign for little, you bring your hands together very close so that you're showing little, little, and then star. This one is a fun one. Point both of your pointer fingers up and then go up with one and then the other. And that is the sign for star. So let's see if we can put those all together. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Good work. Now the sign for wonder, this one is fun. We're gonna put three of our fingers up like it's a W. And we're gonna put that next to our temple and we're gonna go around in a circle like Hmm, I'm wondering something. So that's how I wonder what you are. Can you point out for you? Excellent. All right. So then the next line goes up above the world so high. So when we say above, we're going to take both of our hands and then we're going to make 
a sign above our hand. So this is up above. Excellent. Good job following along. And then for world, once again, we're going to use our three fingers like this. And we're going to roll them around like the world going around. Very good. Now, can anybody guess what the symbol for high might be? That's right. You just want to reach up high. Reach up high. Very good. Now, this one is fun. The symbol for diamond is we're going to make a letter D with our hand. So put most of your fingers in a circle and point your pointer finger up. And then we're going to point it right at where we would wear a diamond ring. So that's a diamond. And the sky goes like this. So that's in the sky. All right, and then we would go back to our first line, which is twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. All right, are we ready to do this to our song? So it's okay if you forget some of the signs because I have forgotten some of the signs too and I've really practiced this. So, all right, let's see if we can do it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are <gasps> Great job, you guys. Thank you for doing that song with me. That's so great. All right, everybody. So I have another story for us. And this one is called Harry and Horsey. And it's written by Katie Van Camp. Whoops, I'm trying to drop my book. Katie Van Camp. And it has pictures by Lincoln Agnew. So let's find out what kind of adventure Harry and Horsey go on. Oh, look, it's nighttime. It was way past bedtime, but Harry wasn't tired. Neither was Horsey. The moon was keeping them awake. It was shining on the shelf where Harry's brand new super duper bubble blooper had been put away for the night. Come on, Harry whispered. Wherever Harry went, Horsey went too. So they crept across the room. Harry knew exactly how to get his bubble blooper down. And of course, Horsey helped him. That looks so dangerous. I can't believe he's all the way up there. Oh my goodness. <gasps> bloop, bloop, bloop. Soon, bubbles of all shapes and sizes filled Harry's room. Bloop, bloop. They bounced off the ceiling and bumped into the walls. Then, a bubble picked up Harry's train and, bloop, floated it right out the window. Harry laughed as he chased the bubbles. More of them scooped up his cars and his planes and his shoes. Bloop went his books and bloop went his whirly gig gigs. And then all of a sudden, a giant bubble blooped and swept up. <gasps> Horsey! Check that out. It took him all the way into outer space. 
and it carried him up and away. Oh, there was no time to lose. Harry put on his helmet and grabbed his goggles. Then he jumped aboard his rocket ship and took off to find his friend. Harry blasted past Venus and did a loop around Mars, but there was no sign of Horsey. Harry didn't find Horsey on Saturn either, but he did find his cars. They were racing around Saturn's rings, tearing toward the finish line. Go red, Harry cheered. Then he took off for the Milky Way. When he arrived, he saw something moving among the stars. But it wasn't Horsey, it was Kitty. She was having a lovely time in space with milk drops on her whiskers and stardust on her face. Have you seen Horsey? Harry asked. Kitty shook her head and mewed. Oh, Harry was really starting to worry. He missed Horsey. Then, in the distance, Harry saw something at the edge of the crescent moon. He looked closer. Could it be? Can you guys see him? Oh, Horsey! There's Horsey! Hold on, I'm coming. Fast, super fast, way too fast. Harry steered clear of a comet and swooped around a satellite. <gasps> when at last he arrived, Harry jumped onto the moon and slid down to rescue his friend. Harry was very happy to see Horsey. And Horsey was happy to see Harry, too. Let's head home now, Harry said, hugging Horsey tight. Next time we go on an adventure, let's go together, okay? Horsey liked that idea. And down, down, down they came. Because wherever Harry went, Horsey went to. That's the end of Harry and Horsey. So are you guys ready to do some counting with me? Can you guys show me five fingers on your hand? That's right. That's all five. How about just one finger? Can you show me just one finger? Just one. That's right. All right. So I have some friends and we're going to do some counting with my friends. Way up high in the sky, one silly horsey went flying by. Can you guys show me one finger? Just one finger. <gasps> she called out to number two. So they'll have fun the whole night through. Can you guys show me two fingers now? Two fingers, excellent. Way up high in the sky, two silly horsies went flying by. They called out to number three. They streaked through space and all said, Wee! Can you guys show me your three fingers now? Excellent. Way up high in the sky, three silly horsies went flying by. They called out to number four. Wow, they said, this is not a boar. All right, show me four fingers now. Excellent. Way up high in the sky, four silly horsies went flying by. They called out to number five, and they all said, let's dance a jive. 
<laughs> Way up high in the sky, five silly horsies went flying by. They played and danced and sang some more until it was time for them to snore. <gasps> All right, everybody, I'm going to put the horsies to bed. So can you say good night to the horsies? Good night, white horse. Good night. What color is he? Red horse. Very good. How about our friend here? What color is she? Good night. Pink horse. That's right. How about this friend? What color is he? That's right. He's a brown horse. Say good night, brown horse. And what about our friend here? What color is he? That's right. He's a blue horse. Can you say good night to the blue horse? Oh, good job, you guys. You did great. All right. I have another book to share with you. This one is called Be You, and it's written and illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. And what's really cool is that one of our FC Cincinnati players, Greg Garza, he actually did a Facebook story time for us with another Peter Reynolds book called The Word Collector. So if you haven't seen that yet, I recommend checking that out because it's by the same author and I really like him. So this is Be You by Peter Reynolds. You were born to be so many things. Can you guys see all of the words on those pages? Wow, so many great words. Generous, smart, dynamic, interesting, clever, loved. Wow, we could spend a lot of time reading all those words, but we'll move on to the next page because we're going to talk about some of these words. My wish for you, no matter where your journey leads, is for you to always be you. This little person is wearing a t-shirt that says, born to be me. Be ready to take the next step toward being an amazing human being. Be curious. Turn every stone. Ask every why. And keep digging deeply. Discover your own answers. Be adventurous. Live a big life. When you are ready, step outside your comfort zone. Bravely explore new paths and see where they lead you. Be connected. Find kindred spirits. Be with those who make you feel like the real you. Be persistent. Keep going. Never stop. Keep going. Never stop. Keep going. Never stop. Be different. Be silly, be quirky, be odd, be unique, be weird, be colorful, be okay with being different, be just the way you are. Be kind, be understanding, help those around you to be themselves, listen. Then listen some more. Learn more about who they are. Be brave. Try new things. 
take a deep breath and plunge forward into new experiences. It gets easier every time you try. You know what? There's a word on this page that we might not have heard before too. Plunge. Well, let's see. Maybe we can figure out what that means by looking at the picture. What, what's this guy about to do right there? He's about to dive into that water, isn't he? So that's what plunge means. It means jumping into something. Be your own thinker. Think for yourself and set your own unique course. It isn't always easy, but you'll be heading in the direction of you. Be okay being alone. Take time to be on your own. Hear your own thoughts, your inner voice. Listen to your heart. Be patient. Being more you takes time. Take a deep breath. Relax. Let your future unfold at its own pace. It will be worth the wait. Be okay reaching out for help. When you need a helping hand, a compassionate ear, an encouraging word, reach out. You know what? There's another big word on this page. Compassionate. Does anybody know what compassionate means? Well, we talked on an earlier page about being kind and being understanding, and that's what compassionate means. So when you need somebody to be compassionate to you, you let them know that. As you voyage out into the world, remember, no matter what, you will always be loved. You are ready, so go ahead, be you. Be very, very you. And that's Be You by Peter Reynolds. Oh my goodness. Are you guys ready to do a little bit more sign language? Because there is a poem that I have specially for bedtime. And this one is called Under the Darkness. So we're gonna learn some new signs for this. Do you remember when we did Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that above looks like this? Well, when we do under, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and make this hand into like a fist with our thumb, and then we're gonna go under our other hand. So that's under. All right, good job. Are you guys getting under? Excellent work. Now, how about the word darkness? Now, here's, this is really kind of cool. So we're going to take both of our hands. We're going to like pass them over our eyes. Like this is, well, that would be very dark if you covered up your eyes, wouldn't it? So the poem starts out under the darkness. Very good. Now, do you guys remember star from Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Do you remember the sign for that? Can you show me what star is? That's right. Good job, everybody. So under the under the darkness, there are stars. Very good. Now, how about under the stars, there is a, this is the sign for tree. Put one arm out flat and put your elbow on your hand. And then we're going to wave our hand like it's a tree shaking in the breeze. Very good. So we're going to make under the stars, there is a tree. All right, good, good work. Now, under the tree, there is a blanket. 
So to make the sign for blanket, we're just gonna act like we're pulling a blanket right up to our chin, making ourselves comfortable with our blanket. Excellent, excellent. So under the tree, there is a blanket and under the blanket, there is me. All right, do we think we could put all of this together? It's okay if you forget some of the signs. I'm still learning all of these signs myself. So, under the darkness, there are stars. Under the stars, there is a tree. Under the tree, there is a blanket. And under the blanket, there is me. All right, you guys are so good at that. You're making very good progress with sign language. So everyone, I have one more story for us. And it is called Bedtime for Batman. And this story was written by Michael Dahl with pictures by Ethan Beavers. And I'm going to show you in the back of the book, they actually have some illustrations of the author and the illustrator. So we have Michael Dahl and we have Ethan Beavers right there. Those are the guys who made this book. So let's see what happens in bedtime for Batman. Each day, the sun sets. Each evening, a dark night rises. Shadows deepen. Stars cover the sky. <gasps> Suddenly, the hero gets a signal. <gasps> Do you guys see the bat signal up in the sky? <gasps> but what about the signal that the boy is getting? Uh-oh, he's pointing at the clock, isn't he? I think that means it's bedtime. He must get ready. Prepare the Batmobile. A great adventure awaits. Look, they both put their capes on. Excellent. Moments later, zoom goes the Batmobile. The hero speeds through the shadows. Then it's time to take care of business. What business is the boy ready to take care of? He's got to go to the potty, doesn't he? The hero cleans up the daily grime and brushes aside his fears. Your dirty deeds are over. He must lock away whatever he can and throw away the key. For there are those who depend on him. What's the boy doing in this picture right here? What kind of animal is he taking care of? Does he have a, a fish? That's right, he's feeding his fish. <gasps> Meanwhile, Batman is saving people in the city. Thank you. <gasps> and those he can count on. It's up to you, old pals. <gasps> the boy has a puppy, and Batman has Robin and Bat Dog. The hero watches over them all. Look up there, it's Batman. He is finally ready 
for the long night ahead. <gasps> Good night, dark night. And in the back of this book, we have our bedtime checklist. Uh, we've seen the boy go potty and a bath, put on his pajamas and brush his teeth, <gasps> picked up all of his toys, that's right, and had a story time just like us. So everyone, thank you so much for coming to join us for story time. Let's all say goodbye together by going and tickle the clouds. Now tickle your toes. Now clap your hands and tickle your nose. Reach down low, reach up high. Story time's over. Wave goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us.